in your brain. Do you love this subject? Do you love being at school? So attitude also matters. Are you biased towards a teacher? Because if you don't love a teacher, you will also not love the subject that the particular teacher is teaching and you will not understand. So attitude also. Is it a positive one or a negative one? Attitude. Environment. Is it noisy? Like if a school is located in the, in the middle of the town, it is too noisy. If it is not like St. Michael that is on a hill, quiet there. So environment also matters. The quality of the teachers. Are we having trained teachers in a school? Or we are picking dropouts? Because a trained teacher will know which method is to employ to deliver a piece of information to the, what? To the learners. So all of those things do what? matter a lot and can distract the, the teaching learning environment. Okay, on the lighter note. Yes. <laughs> As we go on with our conversation, on a lighter note, I just um, having it come from you, <laughs> some of the, the proverbs that they say about education. My producer earlier on was citing out education is the key to success. What are some of those other proverbs that you could share with the viewer? That, 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 that proverb is 110 percent correct. Mm -hmm. Because for you to succeed, you must know how to read and write. You see, when we talk about education, people may think that education is only, is only the papers achieved. But remember, I told you that we teach for three reasons. We teach to affect the heart, the behavior part of it. You cannot find an educated person moving around the street while eating, unless it's uncultured. That is the affective domain, the discipline part of it. The skills, you will learn the different skills to conduct business, like an entrepreneur, ship education, uh, exercising the body, physical education. So, education is the key to success. You cannot succeed because even when you're conducting a business, running a business, and you're not educated, mm -hmm. you will need to interact with educated people. Mm -hmm. how to count money, how to record books of accounts. So education is the key to success. And nowadays the things has, have so far changed that wherever you will put your hand or your foot, papers are needed. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that even these people who attend, who attend on public toilets, they need the senior four. Can you imagine? These people who are cleaning roads around, senior four. So, Education is the key to success. Though people look at success as getting a job, but success of education goes far beyond that. Create more proverbs for us. Any proverbs that you'd cite out? Any proverb uh -huh. I can from, cite out? Yes, away from education being the key to success. Any other you'd have in mind? Education is everything. It's everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once you get education, you have everything in your pocket. A good wife, a good job, discipline, communication. Educated people will not just wake up, just speak aimlessly in the community, even in the meeting. Even in the meeting, you will see that a meeting for educate meeting, even if it is a village meeting with educated people, it will have a big difference from a village meeting which does not have educated what? people. They are taught to be orderly. Education will nurture you to be an orderly and organized person. You will know what comes first, what follows next. And this is what I was telling you, the hidden curriculum. Things we learn at school consciously or unconsciously. Being smart. You will learn it from school. Haven't you seen all the people who were maybe teachers or civil servants, somebody is eight years, but he is the smartest person in the village? This is the success we are talking about. Much as the people look at success as going to school, getting a fat job, getting a lot of money, 
it is far beyond that. Discipline wise, it, the discipline we attain in education is success. By the way, if you're an educated person, but when people die around and you don't go to mourn them, then it will, you, you will not be successful, however much you, you might be. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you missed a gap, you miss a point, and you have a gap somewhere as far as affective domain is concerned. Well, so education must bring out mm -hmm. somebody who is all round. Mm -hmm. That is when we shall say that person is sir. Successful. successful not only looking at the financial bit of it and the job somebody will attain after education, education. yes oh amazing uh, well getting to you uh, you've been an you've been there for quite a while and you're such an expert yes. and uh, of course we commend you for the great work that you're doing what makes you stand out or excel when it comes to this component a topic of discussion identifying the abilities of the learners what makes you stand out or excel what what sense makes you excel what makes me excel yes. as a person when it comes to this topic when it comes to this topic mm -hmm. uh excellence comes in from having the system to identify the different abilities as i told you that for us in school we have an all around the curriculum we teach everything we teach the cognitive the brain what we learn in school which is timetabled mm -hmm. but also we have the debates where by these debates we shall identify those people who can turn out to be good speakers good orators and also good leaders but also we have the outside activities whereby we got the field mm -hmm. and also nurture and identify that's why we have produced uh, all the students in all of the mm. of, of, of the world. Learning. Yes, like for example, uh, the, the, the educationists, uh, civil servants in the army, athletes, footballers, just because for us we look at everything. Okay. Mm. Uh, how, have you, how do you approach the problem solving task in uh, institutions? Because I know. You have the slow learners. Yes. Yes. So how do you approach? How do we approach and solve such yes. issues? Of course, the first solution is identifying. Identify is somebody a high achiever mm -hmm. or is it a slow learner? Mm -hmm. You identify. Then when you identify, talk to this learner. Keep on encouraging it through guidance and counseling. Don't condemn this learner because he's a slow learner because uh, I, as I told you, is determined in some way, and there are many factors surrounding this. So, bring this student closer to you. We always encourage teachers to bring these learners closer to them. Mm -hmm. Talk to them, encourage them. Mm -hmm. Invite parents for meetings, mm -hmm. discuss, and we share how we can go on to support these learners so that they do excel. By the way, we had a teacher, we have a teacher, Mr. Guma Joram. Mr. Guma Joram one time said that that stream, there was a certain stream, and he said everybody must pass. And Mr. Guma would come and revise with them during a prep. And indeed, they all pass. These are the help that we give. So we don't leave out any category of students because they are all equally good and well. And by the way, when you go outside there in the in the world and Uganda in particular, mm -hmm. you will find that most of these students who were not number one, number two in the class, they are the most successful people. I don't know whether you people have experienced that. And you reach a time of looking for those who were ever the best, the best, the best, and they are nowhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And the other ones are on top of the game. So you identify after identifying, mm -hmm. come up with the strategies, appreciate it, talk to them, encourage them, guide and counsel, don't cast it, get. Then you give them also extra work as compared to the others who are first learners. This one must be supported by extra work. 
then you encourage them to we always encourage them to buy textbook so that they are also well equipped so when you do that coupled with the involvement of parents also having class meetings with them organize me we organize meetings with them and discuss what should we do and incidentally when you ask them how what should we do so that we all excel or pass from one level to another they will bring strategies master you want to test weekly <laughs> we launch our tests like mr mask has always given seniors five six launch our tests mm -hmm. so some of these things come from the learners them selves in the whole process yes um in the whole process or whatever you're putting in place that really helps them uh, to stand out and, yes uh, find find their best foot forward find a way of placing their best foot forward um, where have you gotten positive reactions or post, a positive response, either from the peers, the learners themselves, the parents, and the teachers? Yes, we have always got positive which responses. Areas? Which, which specific areas? In which specific areas? Um, when it comes to academic work, when the parents are invited at school, to discuss academic performance of their learners, they appreciate it so, so much. They see that a school is mindful and is also caring. So normally when we sit and discuss that we need this, we need the other, we need to do this, the other, they have always been supportive. And out of their support, nobody remains in the class. All learners pass and they go to another mm -hmm. level. So. We have always scored when we invite parents at the school. Like of recent, when we had the VD mm -hmm. on the 9th of June, we were talking to the parents of the candidates, and we are slowly inter we are implementing all of what we agreed upon, and that is a success. So parents have also been uh, supportive, but also the learners in the end appreciate because they will see that the school is mindful about them and they end up passing. Mm -hmm. They end up passing and even excelling far better than the other ones who are first learners. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you look out for, um, of course, the others who have unique challenges? Do you have uh, preferred, that require preferred learning styles? Maybe they're visually impaired. What do you think can be done? What, is, what would you share? Yeah, like uh, at our school, we have always not had uh, those learners having serious health challenges like those who are visually impaired. Uh, we only get this mild one who have issues with their uh, eyes, short-sighted. But those ones are always taken to hospital and they are given glasses and they come back and the life moves on well. Okay, uh, maybe um, is there a topic? <laughs> maybe just getting to know your interesting, your best subject. My best subject. Okay. I'm a teacher of history, and I I I I, I live history. <laughs> I work on history. I teach history, mm -hmm. so I love history, mm -hmm. and I'm a good reader. I so much like reading mm -hmm. and making research because mm -hmm. history goes with the research. So my best subject is uh, history. However, I have also eaten a lot when it comes to agriculture and commerce. Because at a younger age, I started a simple business. Mm -hmm. so and I've please kept... share tips. Share tips to some learners out there who would love to walk your footsteps. Yes. Um, dear learners, mm -hmm. Those who... they are these subjects whereby you will start benefiting, like agriculture. Mm -hmm. You can buy a hen. Out of you save your pocket money, you save a thousand, two thousand. When you go back to our homes, buy a hen, leave it there. By the time you will go back the next holiday, mm -hmm. maybe it will have hatched. Mm -hmm. Commerce, you can start a small business and you keep on growing it slowly. So I started a business in 2004 using 32,000 shillings and I employed my. My, my subject of commerce. Mm -hmm. And by the time I completed the, the, the work of senior four, the money was too much. Daddy wanted to take me for primary education. 
I said no. My aunt Kiza Florence, whom I was staying with, said, uh -uh, you need to go for a level. So I picked money out of my business. I was trading in coffee. I was buying coffee. So I got money. I was using these cups. I would walk around with my bicycle in the village. Uh, those people of Iwa Unama Sogai Ganga can testify. So I would buy sole, 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 sole. At the end of the day, I had money. So I took myself to a level. I started myself. Then later, my mm -hmm. father came in. So these are skills that we can learn from these mm -hmm. subjects. Sorry, sorry, you can start. And up to now, I go down home and dig. And you will find me as if I'm not a teacher. And I've always told the people that I have two jobs. I have teaching, which my father taught me, but I also have agriculture, <laughs> which was taught to me by my mother and the teachers at school. Yes. Very interesting. Uh, well, but just um, uh, we have a few minutes left, but we can still um, have this conversation still going. Uh, just uh, you shedding light uh, yes. to the holiday work, holiday packages, the daily homework. Parents are like, I am tired. At the end of the day, I get back home and I have to get <laughs> buy data, try to do research and do the homework with the child. And then the holiday package itself that government has uh, been discouraging all this while. Uh, very interesting. I have a quarrel with the, that work given to learners to carry home, more so the primary pupils. Because uh, the intention is that to keep this learner busy at, at home. But uh, this work has turned out to be parent, parental work. When these learners bring this work, they hand it over to the parents. Mommy, daddy, they have given me work and I'm too tired to help me. So much as the learner will carry home in the morning good answers, but it may not necessarily be work which is coming from the learner him or herself. So, in my opinion, this homework is not needed much because I even see when my children were in nursery at uh, top or baby P1 and P2, they would carry homework at home. But the, the pupil comes back when he's exhausted and he wants to rest. And then he will throw the work at, the, at you, the daddy, mommy, help me to answer this. Of course, you will answer because the runner will say, if you don't help me tomorrow, I will be kind when I go back without it. So you, the teacher, will mark in the morning everything right, but when actually you are marking a parent. Holiday package. Holiday package is okay. I support it as a teacher. It is okay because some learners, when they go back for holidays, they don't read. They don't program them selves. Yet even some of them go back home, more at secondary level, when they have even a timetable for beginning of the next term, exams, beginning of term. But when they reach home, they just sit on TV, uh, play around, visiting relatives from one door to another, and they, do, they forget about reading. However, holiday work will condition this learner to sit and do it. But of course, that will work when this learner does not dump this work at a parent and say, Mommy, Daddy, help me, because they are doors. They don't care. They are the holiday package will not have read its soul. But its intention is good. And it is to keep this learner on track of learning even at home. Because as you answer questions, mm -hmm. you are forced also to go and read. And read. Yes. Well, um, something we wouldn't wish to, to leave out. Uh, with, with, with the time you've been there with the learners, I know you've, um, you've shared quite, you've, you've shared and listened to their conflict. Yes. Their excitement. Yes. And what they would love to achieve at the end of the day. Yes. What are some of those abilities or skills that you would look out into them, or you would you would wish for them to further carry on? Okay, fine. Yeah, I, I have liked your mentioning that you have been there for long. Actually, I've been a teacher for long. Mm -hmm. I became a teacher way back in 2004 after my work of senior four. 
uh, my grandfather late Samuel Weiss wa Inyiganga na Masoga said you're going to be a teacher he had a nursery school around and I started teaching with him there I went to senior five but I would come back and teach so I started teaching as a licensed teacher way back in 2004 then 2008 I graduated as a teacher so I don't know if I'm considering myself have I been a teacher from 2004 from 2008 but I'm told all of from 2004 uh, so my experience is wide it is one level I've not taught university but I've taught in Nassau I've taught in primary I've taught in secondary so I have taught at all of those levels. Well so done. it is very interesting for you to tell me that I've been there for long. Well Indeed, you're right. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the skills or the potentials? Like I, I earlier mentioned, when we talk about the potentials, they are the special abilities we foresee in these learners or the special talents. One of them is leadership. Leadership. The, when you organize elections at school and they vote uh, some students into these bodies for prefects, you can identify those prefects who are very, very active. And then you concentrate on them, you keep on giving them tips, leadership tips here and there. You encourage them to read about leadership, so eventually you can nurture them into. And we have have. We have had many leaders who have been who have been nurtured along that line from a school, a primary, high school. Somebody is a prefect, uh, a level is a prefect or high school and university. And such leaders have always turned out to be very outstanding leaders. And you will differentiate a leader who is just uh, jumping on the wagon when he's mature is far different from that leader who has been nurtured way back from school. So we can identify and nurture the leadership ability. Uh, we can also look at um, uh, the abilities when it comes to MDD, music, dance, and drama. Remember we said a school must only must not only concentrate on classwork. Classwork. So you can identify those who are very good at uh, talents, outside talents, like a football, like a netball, and then they form a school team, expose them to the school competitions, districts, zonal competitions this week's competition is, and they can go up to national. So, talents can also be one of the potentials we can nurture. We can also look at uh, music, dance, and drama. Most of these musicians we have in the world, uh, Uganda in particular, they started singing from school choirs. So, you identify, uh, have MDD competitions. Organize the, 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 the teams or the choirs from different houses or classes. Organize a competition. You will be able to spot by observation that so and so and so and so, they are very good when it comes to music, dance and drama. But also there is the cognitive domain, I those whom, who are very, very well upstairs. The brain works so high you also encourage them because such children are also very hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. They think they know it all and they are on top of their game. So they need always to be guided. Some of them are very talkative in class, very stubborn and very indisciplined. So they need also to be tamed. So once you identify that this learner is very bright, don't say that one is bright and you leave. You must watch over this learner from time to time to also make him or her a responsible Ugandan. Oh. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs>
for your time and for the viewer who's been a part of this particular episode right from the start up until now as we wind up our conversation we salute you and we appreciate you for watching well i believe i like our guest for the day edward who has been inspiring us giving us more insight that is through the topic of discussion for today's episode that is um identifying abilities of learners i hope you've at least picked one or two things or the keys you have shared with us have helped you to know how to unlock to unlock potential from your child or maybe if you are an educationist it has helped you uh, to know how you can unlock the greatness from each and every learner out there well we do appreciate you and i will congratulate you for the time you've been there you. and i wish you the best Thank please you. keep it up okay. as you continue nurturing these young ones Wish you all the best and our greetings to St. Michael. And thank you, madam. Well, that's all we had time for for this episode. Join us once again next week, same time, same place. My name is Sandra Kahunde, UBC, Inspiring Uganda. Thank you for watching Education for <laughs>
He keeps when anointing meets expectations, miracles are physical evidence of God's power. Join Pastor Sandra Bengana of the Road to Redemption Ministries every Sunday on UBC TV from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. and live on Magic 100 FM from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. For counseling, you can contact our offices on plus 256-759-621-314. To be part of our services, we are located 